Today's podcast is presented by Podgo. Podgo is the easiest way for you to monetize your podcast, providing podcasters with a flat rate for ad space so you always know how much you get when you include an ad from Podgo. Apply today to become a member and immediately be connected with advertisers that fit your audience. That's podgo.co at P-O-D-G-O dot C-O. And be sure to add Booze and Spirits podcast in the How Did You Hear About Podgo section of the application. Hello and welcome to the Idiots at the Gate podcast. Transformers the movie when Optimus Prime dies. Like if there was a giggle at the end of that, I'd have been, oh, okay, things are going to be fine. But that was my first actual life lesson and loss, watching Optimus Prime die. And I was disgusted and I was gutted. And there was no talking to you. If there was a giggle at the end, I'd have been like, that was just a cartoon. But no, it was an actual loss event in my life. Idiots at the Gate podcast, now available on floppy disk and all good streaming platforms. Hello and welcome to the Idiots at the Gate podcast. I I, st- I keep forgetting the name. <laughs> Smooth Juicy, is that what the, new, the one that's out now? Smooth Juicy. No, that's the wrong website there, Gav. Oh. <laughs> Idiots at the Gate podcast, available on all streaming platform machines and cassette. Listen now or the puppy gets it. While we're recording, though, Sean sent me a spooky house. I haven't looked at it yet. That's for sale. Spooky house. Spooky house for sale. Sending me things on Zillow that I love but probably can't afford is my love language. It's fine. Yeah, I know. You send me a lot of stuff and half the time I go, oh, I can't afford that and I don't bother to look at it. (laughs) (laughs) He's no fun. Mm. Same reason I don't go shopping for yachts online. (laughs) I don't. You're gonna miss the good deals. I don't even want a yacht. <laughs> I mean, I anticipate buying a house in the next couple of years. So, like, maybe I'll win the lottery or become really successful on my non-existent OnlyFans before then. It's hard to say. My budget <laughs> might go up to 1.2 mil. I don't know. We can hope. <laughs> Welcome to the Booze and Spirits Podcast. It's like a drink with death. I did it right. She did it right. Huzzah. It's like the first time ever. <laughs> it kind of is. Today, we are having a very special episode. All our episodes are very special. Everyone is special. But our episodes um, are usually like short bus special. This is like special occasion <laughs> special. <laughs> so we're coming up on Mother's Day, sort of, slightly, I mean, this is our last episode before Mother's Day, so we thought that we'd bring in a special guest. She's known as Shanna. She's known as Banana. She's known as Hey Lady and that woman, but we just call her mom. <laughs> it's our mom. I call her Who Spanky. Also call- I was going to say, I was going to put Spanky in there, and I forgot to put Spanky in there. I-, I had a list, and I missed that one. Hi, Mom. Hi. I'm the Hi. mama. Oh, or- <laughs> and also the gangy. The gangy, that's true. It's a very important role she fills. <laughs> the one she likes the best. She definitely prefers being our children's gangy to our mother, I think, but not true. <laughs> There's less uh, blowback for being the gangy than there is for well, being the mom. And those kids are a lot cuter than we are currently, so. <laughs> there is an extra layer of protection in there, That's that That's, is true. <laughs> a buffer zone. So, what are we going to talk about? I mean, uh, we kind of wanted to bring you in for Mother's Day, and we spent a lot of time telling ghost stories, and I know you've got some ghost stories that you've collected over the years. This episode is going to come out on Arbor Day, so I was thinking about the giant tree spirit that you saw in your bedroom when we lived in Winston. Oh, <laughs> that, yeah, there's that. I don't know if it translates well into a story. Probably not. It's just all I could think of that kind of fit both themes. I haven't even heard the story, I don't you think, so. Well, you were, you were there. I mean, physically, not necessarily in that room. But, um, <laughs> not mentally. Mentally, I was under a bridge. <laughs> I, I was sleeping at one point when, I don't know, I guess maybe you were, Kate, you were like, I'd say three or four, maybe. And I was sleeping in the bedroom, and I was in that kind of half-awake, half-sleeping state. That's where I see a lot of weird stuff. But, um... I turned to my right, and there was a huge tree 
in my room and it was it was really cool kind of creepy but there was a tree there and it stayed there for quite a while even after i you know knew i was totally awake and that's the story the how exciting I mean, Nick and I have mentioned that a lot of weird stuff had happened in that house. We haven't gotten into a whole lot of details, I don't think, on the pod, but... We haven't. I, don't, I was kind of wondering if maybe this is the time we do that. It or might or be. Or maybe not. <laughs> Ready, go. <laughs> All right, well, uh, Kate and I have mentioned on occasion that we grew up in... Dun, a dun, dun. Fairly sufficiently haunted house. Sufficiently haunted. Estimates. Sufficiently haunted. <laughs> Sufficiently haunted. Why, what's to say about it? I mean, we kind of had the standard horror movie set up where we come to a new town and move into a new house, and, and this was right after Katie was born when we moved. And it started off with me hearing from the neighbor kids, oh, you guys moved into the haunted house, which seemed a little too good to be true, because even before we moved here, I'd been obsessed with ghosts and hauntings and that kind of stuff. Scooby-Doo. True. Scooby, Scooby-Doo did it. Scooby-Doo twisted me for life. But I don't know... The earliest ghostly encounter that I can remember was when I got woken up in the middle of the night by the hand. I don't know if anyone, if you two remember that. I mean, I remember the story, but I think I was really little when it happened, so I don't remember it happening. I remember you talking about it later, but at the time, I don't remember hearing about it. Well, I woke up in the middle of the night for whatever reason. It's just you wake up in the middle of the night. And I looked up and I saw a glowing green hand right above my head. And my headboard was pressed against the wall. So that would have meant that the hand would have had to have been coming through the wall. Or I guess it just occurred to me it could have been something that was like occupying the quarter of an inch between the bed and the wall there and reaching down. But it had a, it was in a position that it looked like it was coming down to like grasp my face until my eyes opened. And then it kind of jerked back like, oh. I've been noticed, and then just kind of sunk away out of my field of vision, like, okay, never mind, and that just paralyzed me with terror, obviously. I wanted to go tell mom and dad about it, but I think it took me a good 15, 20 minutes to work up the courage to uh, exit my bed, and my memory there is hazy. I think I came to tell you and dad about it, and probably something you guys didn't want to deal with at 2, 3 in the morning, so I was told to forget it and go back to bed, and eventually I did. I would say probably at 2 or 3 in the morning, I probably was kind of incoherent um, to begin with. But <laughs> I know you did used to occasionally come and hop in the bed with us. But. I mean, I feel like I spent a fair amount of my childhood sleeping between mom and dad because of nightmares or things happening in the house. That might just be a family thing because all my kids are have a hard time falling asleep if they're not with someone else at the time. Like, they can camp out with each other and be fine, but if they have to sleep in a bed by themselves, they get uncomfortable. Your kids sleep like a pile of kittens, they though. Do, yeah. They really do. <laughs> <laughs> always have. Probably always will. <laughs> College if might get weird. Just saying. So I don't know how much of me coming and, and burrowing in with you guys is ghost-related and how much was just, hey, I want to be with someone else related. I mean, I remember going and getting in bed with them if I was scared, so... There's been times as an adult where I'm like, hmm, am I too big to go crawl in bed between mom and dad? <laughs> like, <laughs> the answer is yes. Um, it is. And it, you would end up taking the dog spot, so. Yeah, I'd have to fight the dogs to get in now, so. <laughs> the next kind of paranormal experience I remember in that house, boy, wouldn't have been till around 12 or 13 that I specifically remember. Because I know it was after we went to Disneyland, because I had that Disneyland goofy hat, the one with the big long ears. Yeah. And I was sitting in my bed, like, thinking, hmm, wonder if I can move things with my mind, as a person does. Everyone's done it. Don't pretend you haven't. So I was sitting there trying to move the ears with my mind, and I, and concentrating and concentrating, and nothing happened. And, and then you pooped I, yourself. No. <sighs> no, well, that was a different I gave, story. I gave up concentrating and said, all right, fine, I can't. And then one of the ears popped up. <laughs> so I don't know if that was me. I kind of doubt it. I don't know if it was someone else involved. Yeah, it was, that was kind of an unusual occurrence. Yes. What? She asked if she could say fell fuckery. <laughs> yeah, just make sure you say it loud and clear, or else I don't know okay. what you're saying. <laughs> but this is we're not we're not PG here. You no. have to be 21 to follow our Instagram for safety. Apparently. Oh, is is that a thing? I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, you have to be 21 to follow our Instagram. Maybe uh, it's 18. 
Um, I mean, I remember being preschool aged and being scared to go to whatever end of the house nobody was in because our house was like this incredibly long rambler style with like Nick's room and the master at one end and we had like a converted garage and I did not like to be at whatever end of the house no one was at because I would see like white I I don't even like they weren't orbs they weren't like person figures they were just like white translucent mist floating through the dark in Mm. that house all the time and I as an adult have not seen anything like that again I thought maybe one of you guys had told me long ago about seeing some sort of triangular shaped thing floating down the hall to the bedrooms. I don't know, I but you call. guys did convince me for a while when I was a kid that I was an alien hybrid from the shit you would see. <laughs> well, I, you still could be. I don't know. You don't, you don't outgrow that. My giant head and mom seeing weird gray men at night. <laughs> Yeah, I used to wake up screaming because of the little gray men who would touch my skin and their touch was, like, cool and squishy. And this was when I started when I was really little, like, probably five years old, when we lived way out in the boonies in the Starbuck area. And I had no clue of what little gray men were at that point in time. But it happened, kept happening through the time that... I guess I'm not my hysterectomy, if you want to really think about it. Hmm. <laughs> well, there's that. Weird, there's the code. We've been trying to figure out how people get away from aliens. Yes. That's the code. This yeah, is actually a conversation. Sterilization. That was a conversation we actually had. Like, if it's aliens, like, what the fuck are you, am I going to do about it? Like, I'm not saying it's aliens, but if it's aliens, I have zero defenses. I just have to hope death stops it, essentially. Hysterectories. Hysterectory. I'm not even drinking today, and I can't Hysterectory. say it. Hysterectory. Harper herpenderp. <laughs> Get a herpenderp and a clippy clop, and the aliens will leave you alone. There you go. <laughs> We've solved all of the problems solved of the, the problems. alien abductions. <laughs> well, it also solved all my problems of angrily kicking doors off hinges and horrible migraines. So. Mom's rage issues. Yeah. I thought you only ever kicked a door off a hinge because Katie walked herself in the bathroom. Oh, my That's God. not the only time. She also killed the screen door, like, the day after Dad put it up. I remember that. That wasn't the <laughs> day after. You're exaggerating now. It was, like, a week. <laughs> kind of pissed me off, because it slammed at me. And I, I showed it who was boss. <laughs> so, back to the ghosty stuff, I guess. <laughs> Instead of the horror mate, well, I'm sure there'll be plenty more hormonal rage as we progress. Um, <laughs> there usually is. I'm pretty sure everyone is aware that I really, really hated the closet in my room. Which um, is funny, because when I had moved into that bedroom, and that closet yeah. is where I hid and cried. Oh, okay. Oh, I hated that closet. And and not just because I didn't like snakes, and the yeah. cat kept... Putting snakes in the closet? Cat I was putting just thinking, snakes in my closet, the son of a bitch. Live snakes. Well, Please note, they were live snakes. Our cat would catch snakes, and bring in the house. Which we can confirm was on him, because they did have, like, claw marks on the tail. So it wasn't like they just went in there on their own. I don't know, maybe he brought them in the house, and then they snuck back there on their own. Who knows, but... Well, your bedroom window didn't shut, so he would usually go in through your window when he brought in treasures, I think. Everyone told me it didn't shut, and I don't remember that. It only shut fine for me, I thought. I thought it, it shut. Didn't, it didn't, didn't latch. latch. So, like, no. you, and it didn't no. have a screen. So I remember it being open, you know, like, eight inches or so, pretty regularly, no. especially before we, like, had air conditioning in the house. Maybe. I don't remember that well, but... Because... Didn't somebody say that it was either my room or the living room that the window didn't shut because somebody had shot himself in there? Wasn't that a story that had come up at some point? Yes. Yeah. So whoever this was that shot himself, I always felt like, and I, and I, well, I can't say always, I feel like now, looking back and putting pieces together, I feel like whoever this guy was that shot himself didn't like me. Well, he was I a ha- teenage boy. Was he? Yeah. Because I remember, in particular, two incidents that happened during dreams and usually if I have some kind of supernatural, ghost-like, or potentially psychic encounter, it's always during a dream. That stuff doesn't happen to me during the day, during the waking hours like it does to like you guys or anyone else. Like, But I had one dream where I was in my closet and being choked to death and couldn't breathe. And at the time, I thought it was weird. There was like three nuns there who were just kind of casually talking Saying something like, oh, well, he'll be gone soon. Don't worry about it. Something like that. 
which is is real weird, but now I'm looking back and I've heard psychics talk about death servants, like people who aren't death but are working on behalf of death will go and collect a soul. So, like, part of me wonders, like, were these three nuns there to come pick me up because this was supposed to be the end of the road? Like, that kind of stuff. Maybe you were just getting a picture from that guy also. Could be. It could be. And the other one that was a really kind of stark, scary moment was a dream about going into the living room and sitting on the chair in there, turning on the stereo, and everything was kind of relaxed. And then when the stereo started up and started playing music, it started going, na 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 And there was kind of a, a, a panic moment, and something came after me, and I woke up. Those are the two most horrible incidents that I can think of while in that house. <laughs> Well, it's worth mentioning that house. Originally, it had been built for a gentleman, I understand, in a wheelchair. That's why this part of the layout was so strange. I was always under the impression that was because it was like a, a care home for a while. It was. was so well, it was accessible. ADA accessible. It was built for the guy in the wheelchair and then... Then became a care home. Gotcha. Just because it already fit the purpose. Right. Exactly. And our house was built on what I believe was the Rose Garden for... Was that the Thiel house that was next to us? Uh, like one of the original historic houses from yeah, town. Yeah, that Mrs. Cole lived in. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I assume, I mean, the house was right there, so I figured it had to be part of their property at some point, but I wasn't sure in relationship to the original grounds what it was. Yeah, and then like the walnut orchard, I think, was like extended in our property in that field. That, yeah. That's why there was those few remaining black walnut trees. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I know these things, by the way. <laughs> well, I mean... I pick up information, you just scuttle butt or... I'm like, do people things. tell me these things? What's happening? Because I'm very confident about all of these things, but I'm not entirely sure uh, where I came up with them. There was another incident that was a little scary, but not as horrible as feeling something's coming directly after me. I remember it was Halloween, about sixth grade, I think, sixth or seventh grade. Got up in the morning, because around that time I'd usually get up before Dad left for work. Well, he'd get up, he'd get ready for work, I'd get up, and then he'd leave, and then you two would be asleep for a little bit before I left or you guys woke up. And I remember one Halloween morning after he'd left, I heard like a horrible witch's cackle down from the bedroom into the house. See, that's the thing, because I know you two would also talk and scream in your sleep, so I don't know that it wasn't just mom doing it in her sleep. Well, yeah, because mom and I, I, I remember being a kid and dad checking if one of us screamed in our sleep, like mom or I. Yeah. Like, I could feel the, god damn it, they're probably fine, but I better go make sure no one's getting murdered energy. <laughs> And then mom and I, I think from what I hear, we'll still have a conversation in a language only twins teach each other in our sleep within vicinity of each other. Two story. So that's kind of covers all the bases on the things that I can remember happening in that house. I don't know. Well, you guys have some I don't remember what the reason was, but I remember being in like middle school. I think you were driving. I remember you had your driver's license, and I needed you to drive me somewhere or something, but your wallet was missing. Yeah. And we looked all over the house for it, and I was home alone at this point in the day after it had been a few days of us looking well, for it. Well, because I, what happened was, since I couldn't find my license, I ended up calling the DMV and saying, am I able to get a replacement? Because this was pre-internet day, so I couldn't just go look that stuff up online. So I called the DMV and said, hey, what do I do? And they said, well, you come in and get a new one. And I was like, hey... So if I get pulled over while I'm coming here to get a license, what do I say? <laughs> but that's where I was at the time when this happened. Okay. Was I, would, I had driven to the DMV to get a replacement license. I just knew you weren't home, and we were looking for We'd still been looking for your wallet, and it was like early afternoon. Mom and Dad were at work. I decided to take a bath, as I do a lot. And while I was in the bathtub in our creepy empty house, the oh. toilet started flushing. And I was like, what the fuck is that? Because it wasn't just like it started running. It started flushing, like, over and over and over again. Like, was it wait for the tank to refill? Or did it just... It would, like, flush, and then it'd be, like, a pause, and then it would flush again. And it did this repeatedly, and I'm freaking out. I think I called mom at work, and she was like, well, just turn the water off. So that's when I, like, leaned behind the toilet to turn off the water, and lo and behold... 
there was your wallet where we had already looked. So there was like this gap between the toilet and the counter where like you kept the little garbage can. There was Nick's wallet. So that's how I ended up with a spare ID for a while. <laughs> if only you'd been 21, you could have sold that to somebody. I know, right? <laughs> But, like, we decided, obviously, the, the creepy stuff stopped happening as much after Grampy died. Nick and I both well, saw lights in our closet that night. Well, I thought Mom did, too. Like, Well, mine wasn't my closet. Mine was above me on my bed. Okay. Or kind of in the corner of the room. Kind of mine was in my closet. I thought yours was, too. Mine would have actually have been on the opposite side of the wall from your closet. Okay. But, like, I remember seeing the light. And then the next day, you and I walking to the post office and me telling you Grampy died. And then... After that, it's like stuff stopped being towards so negative towards you. But I didn't really have those negative experiences. Well, you know, I found out that the people who that I personally infuriate the most on a regular basis are always the people that see themselves in me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pattern I've noticed. So, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, so, the, maybe the ghost saw some of himself in me. I don't know. Maybe. So I don't know if that was just the ghost liked me better or Grampy came in to kick some ghost ass and be like, you're going to leave these kids alone. It's hard to say. <laughs> Grampy was not a real aggressive figure, but... Well, could be when he had to be. I'm guessing... Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> guessing there was moments in his life. I don't well, know. I just have perpetually had night terrors my whole life and then weird dreams and weird vivid dreams. And so I'm still not convinced I didn't use the closets in that house to teleport other places <laughs> as a small child. Well, and I've been thinking about, I don't know how much of this mom knows, um, a gal that we know from the theater. Like, we did a show with her like 10 years ago, but she died a few weeks ago. And I didn't know this at the time. I woke up in the middle of the night and I had sleep paralysis, which I've never had before. Or what I assumed was sleep paralysis, because I felt something on my legs. I usually hear sleep paralysis being, like, on your chest. But I felt like someone grabbed my legs, and I started kicking against it. And, and I could move my legs some, but there was some resistance. And I just thought it was sleep paralysis, which I thought was cool, because I've heard and read lots about it, but it's never happened to me. Then I found out that this girl that we knew had died fairly close to me. <laughs> yeah, so, like that night in wow. in Blaine. So now I feel bad because it might have just been her looking for someone to get a hold of. So yeah. and tried to be receptive the next night, but didn't get anything. So I don't know. I kind of feel bad about that now. Yeah, I don't. That was kind of a tragic case, and I don't think they had found her when that happened to you. No, no. Yeah, this was this was. She was missing at the time, but we didn't know it. And like, even Kel acknowledged your sleep paralysis, didn't she? Wasn't there like an exchange between you two about it? Or you asked, you thought it was Kel. Some yeah, that's yeah. She was asleep. She didn't know what was going on. But I felt someone touch my touching my legs, or like laying on my legs. And at first, I thought it was her. And then I said, "That's not you, is it?" And she was dead asleep. So that's when I started trying to fight it. Well, I remember um, after our friend committed suicide, mm -hmm. and it was about eight weeks afterwards that he came and clearly stood at the foot of our bed, the yeah. dad's and mine, and. I asked him where he'd been, and he said that there was stuff that he had to take care of, but now he was okay. okay. It was just really strange. It's, you know, it's something I've, I've never lost. It's like, always with me. He had, like, a sentence he had to serve before he Almost, could move on. Yeah. I mean, he, yeah, uh, he did some shady well, stuff he, in his life. That's plausible. Well, he also acted kind of harshly and without a lot of forethought when he kill himself. It oh, was, yeah, that was a real, real rough one. Yeah. So th I can understand him not having to act full together and being allowed to go yet, because I'm sure there was some stuff that he had to take care of with his kids, that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I remember two main things. Well, I remember lots of things about that, but the two big ones about that are um, mom volunteering to do the laundry from the bedroom and finding a chunk of meat in it and saying, that, there he goes, giving me a piece of his mind again. <laughs> yeah, I'm classy that way. Yeah. <laughs> and the other thing I remember was it was, he did it a couple weeks before my birthday, and a bunch of people came over for my birthday, and we were drinking that homemade root beer. That was that alcoholic, for sure. <sighs> Quote, root beer. Yeah, quote root beer. Well, but it also was extraordinarily fizzy, and I opened one in the fridge, and it popped. I remember, Mom, you had to go and, like, 
go to another room, and I always kind of figured it was just was too much of a trigger for being close to him killing himself for this this bottle to pop right next to my head like that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, I'm having some triggering thoughts here from all of that, so. And I don't know if you guys know, I mean, this is neither here or there, but did you know his ex-wife also committed suicide several years later? Um, I knew I knew, she, I knew they found her dead. I kind of assumed that. They, I thought she overdosed because she was. I mean, she was even more unbalanced than he was. So that's not. Yeah. She had a pretty messed up life and didn't handle it well. So yeah, yeah, it's so sad. It is. Boy, we're fun. Yeah. We Welcome to the booze and spirits. People who've killed themselves. Fun hour. <laughs> are you in our close circle? Guess how you're going out. <laughs> Our sponsors this week are puppies. Puppies, everyone. They're happy and playful and they want to snuggle you. I love puppies. When in doubt, get puppies. <laughs> so, I guess, well, we should also... I, I mean... There's the mystery of uh, your friend who panicked having spent the night in our house. That's true. I was. I thought about that earlier. Which uh, I guess you know more about than I do, and well, even you don't know much. I don't know the details. I just know that one of my friends, growing up, one of my closest friends, had a panic attack during the middle of a slumber party in our family room. I think there was like five of us girls there, and had her parents come get her. And she never told me why, but she told me as an adult that the ghosts, like the hauntings in the house, were why she couldn't ever stay the night at my house. Hmm. But I'm trying to remember if this is before or after the slumber party at Hope's house where her dad almost shot her sister for her aggressive pranking. We thought there was a prowler and it was just Amber Dawn in men's clothes, (laughs) like throwing things at us and stuff in the yard at night when we had a summer, an outdoor summer slumber party. That was Amber Dawn's favorite thing to do when Hope had a sleepover was torment you guys. Yeah, but this one, like... (laughs) Dawn went outside <laughs> with a gun, <laughs> trying to find this man that was harassing these, like, 11-year-old girls in the yard. <laughs> like, this is Southern Oregon. You can get shot when you do these things. <laughs> he had on his cowboy boots and his cowboy hat and his tidy whities And he was outside <laughs> across the street from the middle school trying to find <laughs> this guy that was fucking with these little girls. <laughs> I get and a mental picture of that, but in it's, mind, it's he, not a good mental picture. He's got a gun belt. I He didn't. I wish he did. In my <laughs> mental picture, he does too. But like, you know, I remember she needed a lot of therapy after that. <laughs> Which one? Amber Dawn? No, oh, Brit. Oh, Brit. Yeah. So and I can't remember if, I think I don't know. I think the slumber party at our house that she vacated was before that party, though. I think it was. That poor girl. She should never... (laughs) All of the trauma at slumber parties for her, apparently. She should have had a better class of freeing sex. (laughs) (laughs) Most of our friends should have better class of friends. (laughs) Most of our friends can't have a better class of friends. Like, <laughs> I love my friends. I would do anything for them. They're amazing people. But uh, to quote Groucho Marx, I don't want to be part of any club that'll have anything to do with me. Like, <laughs> that's our friends. God bless them. God bless them. Well, like, did you have childhood hauntings too, Mom? Wasn't the Grey House in Glendale haunted? Yeah. Yeah. Marionettes. Was... Marionettes. That was Dad's house. Yeah, that was. Oh, okay. uh, your That's dad's for house. a Father's Day episode. I feel like. Even though I did see them after. You think we're going to get enough stories out of Dad for a Father's Day episode? I mean, we're going to have to go into Bigfoot with Dad, but. Okay. I think we I think there's potential there. I did used to see things running up the wall in that gray house when I was, you know, much younger. I think I lived there from like third grade through after graduation in high school, but there was a a portion of the ceiling in my bedroom where it connected to the wall in the corner that every once in a while was not connected entirely, that there was like a space in there. A little crack appeared. Yeah. And stuff would like... Like it lifted up a little? Yes. There was a gap, but not always. And it was never... Well, it didn't seem to ever be anything threatening. It was like weird lights and stuff like that. And mom, who had the room that was just through the wall next to mine, and I've had it happen in there too, 
that there were two beds because she slept in the same room as my sister, Shelly, because she, you know, had all those issues. Um, and if you went to sleep in that room, about 20 minutes after you lay down, you could hear someone walk in and sit. And I always felt like it was some sort of, you know, guardian type thing. It was kind of cool. Have you lived in a house that wasn't haunted? First house in Shelton. First house in Shelton wasn't haunted. It was, it was just horrendous. I don't know. Was the house in Bellingham? It, had a, cre- it had a creepy room like they kept the girl from the ring in, but I don't Yeah, upstairs. I don't... The house in Bellingham, I had wanderers. I don't know that yeah. I had like a... I had people watch me sleep in that house. Yeah. Which I've had in most houses. I forget correctly. And I don't, I don't think anything actually ever happened to me in that house, but I know in that area I saw a lot of stuff that I don't see down here, and I don't know if it was because of the proximity to all that water or what the story was, but I used to see people you could see through quite frequently. Yeah, I don't see, I used to see those on the peninsula a lot too. Yeah. Like just or anywhere around the Puget Sound, I used to see those a lot, and I, I do see like, the occasional translucent person on the side of the freeway here, but it's not nearly as common, which is weird because we're by the vortex. So that causes a lot of weird shit to happen here, I feel like. Maybe it sucks real hard. Oh. I don't know. Mom probably doesn't know this yet. I've been watching, or I, I went through all of the dead files. Obsessively. Uh, well, sort of. I mean, I watched them all. But uh, <laughs> 13 seasons worth. But there's an episode in Roseburg. There's also an episode in Concrete, which just well, confirms also all in- of our suspicions about Concrete, honestly. Oh, yeah. The Concrete one and the Roseburg one both made, like, so much sense to me. It's like, I want to, I want conventions open up so I can track Amy Allen down and just quiz her on both those because I'm obsessed with <laughs> both those cases. Yeah, the Concrete one, she said there's just, like, a whole area there that's just completely corrupted and, like, even the natives didn't use it. They used it as a dump. Like, if someone was crazy, they'd send them to that area to, like, go and let the land have them or whatever um i was actually reading about that in a i bought this like wild west ghost stories book for like real ghost true ghost stories that i found like used somewhere and it was talking about that in regards to the vortex like the miners the like local natives would be like no we don't go in that area and they would just like veer like 50 feet off the path and go around this area and it's because Mm -hmm. of the vortex but uh, Roseburg, and I was I was trying to pinpoint where this house was. I think it was on the south end of Roseburg, kind of like where Lindy's is or was in that area. But the psychic went there, and she said that it's a crossroads between, first of all, a travel path for the dead, and like a dead highway that people move up and down and back and forth on, but also a interdimensional hallway that just random creatures pop out of. That's what she said that spot was. So there's a lot of weirdness around where we grew up is yeah. what it comes down to. <laughs> well, and also like the area mom was like a little kid at has like a stagecoach stop that's completely infamous for like hearing the horses and things. Like I've seen it listed in a lot of haunted location places oh, yeah. and guides and things. Yeah. The Zelia River one. Ranch is what it was called. The oh, one okay. on the way out to the reservoir. Yeah. But... I stand firmly behind we come from weird fairy blood because, you know, when I was little, mom's mom would tell me about playing with her little brother David after he died. That's who I was going to bring up was Grammy because I was going to... And that was in this area, too. That was out in the Applegate. That was in now what is wine and weed country. (laughs) I was going to bring up because you brought up Shelly and Grammy had the story that after Shelly was born, because Shelly had all sorts of disabilities and problems going on. Grammy would be sitting there holding Shelly and just kind of worrying what was going to happen. And a light came down from the ceiling and appeared in the room that she interpreted as an angel. But it just told her, don't worry, everything's going to be okay. And then from then on, she never worried about Shelly again. When we, well, it was after Shelly was born, we had moved from, well, it wasn't a little house, a a house in Azalea. We had moved further up the road into a a less populated area, if, you know, if there is such a thing. And uh, (laughs) our house sat in kind of a wooded area, but behind the house, there was a big empty field and it had been used for like 
cattle grazing and stuff like that. And there were times in the winter that my parents would get up and if you got up, they'd say, don't turn on a light, don't turn on a light. Because if you looked out the window, there would be big sweeping lights that went across that field. And it was, it might have happened all the time, but it was really much easier to see, you know, in the snow because of the reflection and stuff like that. Yeah. But white lights and also red lights. And, you know, it wasn't near a road. Yeah. It was crazy. Not the same area, but one of the, like, most aggressive first-hand alien stories I've heard was from Grammy's friend Billy, who grew up in Tiller, who she lived, like, it was her parents' house out in the middle. This is, for people that are not from Southern Oregon, this is, like, the boondocks of the boondocks. Like, (laughs) there's a lot of pot farms out there now because it's so secluded, but I'm not sure that there's much else. But the house that they were in... When Billy was a teenager, she, like, lived in the, like, back house. Because do people in other parts of the world have back houses? Or is this just a strictly Southern Oregon thing? Could be. <laughs> like, it's just a little house in the back, and usually you let, like, one of your older kids live in it. Um, <laughs> not a guest they, house. They call those mother in laws No, no, uh, they're not. Because it's basically <laughs> just a room with heat and electricity. Sometimes it will have a bathroom or a half bath. But they're not no. the same as a mother-in-law from what I I've ever seen. I know seen. what you're saying. <laughs> it's like a it's a nicer version of a shed. <laughs> it's an upscale shed. And by upscale I just mean it's insulated hopefully. Not always. <laughs> Not always. But there's usually a heat source. But I remember being a kid cuz I would go visit them cuz they had kids my age and they were good friends with Grammy and I'd go stay with them for like a night or two and at one point in time the mom was Billy with the mom was going to therapy and they were doing like some regression stuff and she was having flashbacks to alien abductions from the back house when she lived in it when she was younger but then her middle daughter who was like probably like 14 at the time was staying in that space and she was starting to have these like weird issues and nightmares and mystery bruises and things i think i stopped staying with them after i heard those stories (laughs) i think at that time when billy was there it probably was nothing but a highway through you know, a cutoff and a ranger station because it's up in the mountains and you can see all the valleys and stuff yeah. around it. Yeah, there's like a few houses out there. I don't even think they have a school out there. No, I think you had to go to, you know, 30 miles down the road to Days Creek. Yeah. Probably uh-huh. not 30, but, you know. Well, at least a 30-minute drive, though. And then there's Olala. Do you remember the very end of Olala Road? No. Dude, the energy out there. So, like, out past Zane's house. Wait, no, was it? Yeah. Did Zane live out of the lawn? Yeah. Yeah. So, do you remember where Aubrey's house was? Oh, yeah, In the estate? So, you know, the the energy out there is a little weird, because possibly just because of all the weird hippies and rednecks and, like... Yeah. All that stuff going on. But I don't if you think went, I ever went too deep. I think the, the deepest I ever went up there was Dave Borstein's house. Yeah, and Dave Borstein's house was out there. But if you went past the turnoff for their estates, was the Byron Creek estates. Yeah. If you went out to the end of the road, there was like a a track. Oh, it was like a quad track or dirt yeah. bike yeah. Cr- track yeah, or something. The tracks. But, Everyone called it the tracks. Yeah. I don't know that I ever made it there. I don't think I ever went to the tracks. But I if you it. went... Because if you got close to them, your skin started crawling and the bristles went up. Yeah. Like, it was bad. Like, Aubrey and I used to wander around the woods in the middle of the night, as, you know, you do, as <laughs> teenagers. We would never make it that far. Like, we, even going down there to just, like, turn the car around. Like, just the thought of it, I have goosebumps. Yeah. Like, uh, I just felt you were approaching something thick back there, but I never went that far. You were, and like, I know there's some old mines and stuff out there, but I don't know what kind of juju is rushing through those. Some missing 411 shit, I think. <laughs> we went out one time, it wasn't Olala, it was kind of the uh, other side of the mountain there. And I'll keep some names out of this, because basically what had happened was they were going mailbox smacking. <laughs> I was with them. I didn't smack any mailboxes, but that's what they were doing there. Of course you didn't. We grew up in a very rural community, people. There was not a lot to do. Anyway, they smacked the wrong mailbox and somebody came after us. So they took the car deep off into the woods and turned the lights off and just kind of hung out in the woods in the dark. We were all there for an hour or so. But eventually, and I never saw anything, but 
eventually everyone else in the group saw red eyes looking at us through the woods. And mm-hmm. that was what convinced them that maybe it was time to go and <laughs> get out of there. I don't know a lot of kids we grew up with that, you know, partied in the woods and stuff that doesn't have a red eye story. I feel oh, like. Yeah. Huh. I didn't hear any of those other than that time. I mean, they were never, like, real big stories. They were just kind of nonchalant, I feel like. Like, you know, we were having a bonfire and drinking, and then we saw some red eyes, um, and we left. Like, and that's the story. <laughs> but that's when we bring in Dad for his uh, same kind of neck of the woods Bigfoot stories. So, yeah, All right, well, I guess we look forward to that in a month. <laughs> yeah. Gonna have to talk him into it, I feel like. Probably. Oh, I don't know how hard you'll have to talk. <laughs> Retirement has been hard on him. <laughs> Retirement plus COVID. The man is real bored. He, yeah, he's I'm real sure bored. I'm sure he is. He, um, he sits still now. It's weird. <laughs> that is weird. Get him out of that habit. He might not recover. Did you put together a drink for this week? Well, so here's the thing I was thinking. I was like, well, or my go- Spanky got to put together a drink. My go-to drink for mom is typically a French 75 that I've, like, doctored up in some way, shape, or form. But I realized I posted, I think it was a Violet French 75 around Valentine's Day. Well, you put it on Instagram, and I ended up, I put it on the website, so the so, Cascadia 75 is already out there. Yeah, so I feel like I can't do that. And that was my plan until I remembered, like, last night, I basically already did that. So I uh, <laughs> I was like, well, we'll just talk it through with Mom, and we'll figure out we'll figure out a spanky drink. Unless spanky. Mom has a drink she wants to go with. Spanky and tonic. Spanky and tonics. Awesome. You have to have lemons, <laughs> though, not limes. So, one of my favorite drinks, and I hardly ever get it because I know it's just a pain in the ass for bartenders. That's why I always only make Kate make it for me, is a Sazerac. (laughs) Actually, Sazeracs are are more popular than they once were. They're pretty popular in, like, the craft world now. You're going to a nightclub, you're not going to get a Sazerac, but if you go to most Decent bars, I think, can do a Sazerac. I haven't made one in a while. But a Sazerac is a bitters, cognac, rye, whiskey drink. It's one of the more historical. I think it's an originally a New Orleans drink. I think so. You know how we feel about New Orleans. <laughs> it's, a, it's our favorite. I don't know if it's mom's favorite. I like that one, even though I've never really been there. Mom is to Baton Rouge as I am to Eureka Springs, Arkansas. Copy. That makes sense to me. Possibly no one else, but it makes sense I don't know if it needs to make sense to other people for safety. <laughs> so, is there a way to zhuzh this up? I'm, that's what I'm enough? thinking about. So full of rosemary and catnip or something? I really don't feel like catnip's going to go with this. <laughs> rosemary. Spitballing. We're just spitballing. But lavender. Would be yeah, lavender. Good. We, You know what's blooming right now that I was telling the baby we should collect and make syrup from yesterday, but I don't know how well this would go with it, would be lilac. Ooh. Lilac simple syrup is kind of on my to-do mm-hmm. list right now, but that might be a little Topic. too full, full, like too aromatic floral. Hmm. Nettles? Nettles. I made some simple syrup with Szechuan pepper not too long ago. Do you want a spicy Sazerac? I don't know. It's this. It's your episode. Sure. Let's do a spicy Sazerac. Do you want a, a Szechuan pepper? Szechuan Sazerac. Do you want some uh, some Szechuan sauce from Spanky Mc- Spanky Szechuan Sazerac? Say it three times fast. Can you say it once? That's true. <laughs> Do you want a spicy Sazerac? you want an herby Sazerac? Do you just want me to put fresh singing nettles in it so you get so my lips swell so up? you get yeah so you get <laughs> some tingles? Mm, not. So much that one. I I used to play in stinging nettles as a small child. Not on purpose, but it doesn't bring back good memories. I was just trying to think of, you know, what was in season right now. Dandelions. Dandelions. My pink dandelions aren't doing very well. I'm very sad. Unrelated. What <laughs> kind do you want? You want Szechuan peppers? Sure. You want you want Thai chilies? You want habanero? I just did a habanero drink. I don't and want I, habanero. So you did a serrano, or did you do a hob? Yeah, maybe it was a serrano. I like Szechuan because it's not. She likes Szechuan because it's hard to say. It's hard to say, but it's it's Speaking more Szechuan, of, Szechuan. more of a tingle instead of a burn. That's well, what I say. I do have that buzz button powder too now. Is that going to be something that's a necessity or is that just like an elevator? Well, it makes your mouth tingly. Ooh, so we'll 
KY Fire Loop. That's a... <laughs> okay. The more you know. TMI. I assume. I don't. By that, Nick means one time he mixed some fireball and some KY jelly. Let's <laughs> try to make napalm, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I can do a Szechuan pepper Sazerac. That's, yeah, there's so many, so many. Spanky Szechuan Sazerac. Okay, it's okay. done. Okay. The Thank recipe you. will show up. I don't know if I'll use the buzz button for that, because I just feel like that bright blue just is not going to complement the drink. I don't like blue food, necessarily. It's not a color found in nature. Very exactly. Often. Well, not in a lot of foods. Not. Butterfly pea blossom. Yeah, but if you put something acidic in there, then it turns blue. I'm just saying it started out blue. Nick's shirt is blue. I would not eat Nick's shirt. But there's a hot wiener on it's it. It's got a sausage on it. Daddy's special sausage. I see that. <laughs> I'm the only one not wearing a booze and spirit shirt right now, by the way. What's your problem? Uh, I'm wearing a I'm wearing a Avengers shirt and a Cascadia Axe Company hoodie. Come on, guys. You're not right. staying on brand. I don't even know what brand I am right now. My allergies are so bad and my RA is flaring, so my brand right now is self medicating. <laughs> It's a family brand. It's <laughs> it is. It's um. It's been passed down. It's a heritage line. <laughs> All right. Are we gonna do a next episode? Well, that's what I'm trying to bring up my calendar to see when the next release is. So I'm not sure how that needs to, to, to inform our decision. We're going into May because it's gonna be May. Um, because March hasn't happened in my head yet. That's fair. You just sounded like Jinx. <sighs> oh my god, that's the best thing anyone's ever said to me. Can we get Jinx Monsoon on the show somehow? You're, that's going to have to be on you. Because I'm, I'm only vaguely aware of who that is. I'm sending a message. We'll see. <laughs> I'm just going to start sneaking into drag queen DMs on Instagram. So there's not a lot going on in May in general. Because the next episode will be post Beltane. Post Mother's Day. Tax day is in May. We're missing Cinco de Mayo. Oh, that's right. They got moved this year. I forgot about that. I was thinking, no, it's not. But, the next episode uh, will be around a therapy appointment. Does that... You can have my therapist yeah, on no. next. There you go. <laughs> There's probably a HIPAA violation in there. Denying right? everything we said for every episode from here on in. <laughs> Do we have any fun theme days coming up? May well, 4th. that's what I was looking. Okay, so May 14th is the next release. It's National Buttermilk Biscuit Day and National Dance Like a Chicken Day is the 14th. May 3rd is a National Paranormal Day. Woo-woo! Why? Why? Why is... Ooh. The Kent State shootings is on the calendar, apparently, on this... Oh. Well, you gotta plan that out ahead of time. (sighs) I just got nauseous. May 15th is World Whiskey Day. Well, I guess we'll do a whiskey drink. Uh, And then May 16th is... National Mimosa Day. I need to make a note of that. National Wait Staff Day is May 21st, so uh, please tip 100% that day. It's also National Talk Like Yoda Day, so don't tip them unless they talk like Yoda. May 21st is Talk Like Yoda Day? Well, you can't do it on May the 4th. There's too much marketing to do that day. Victoria Day, we can do Canadian stuff. Ooh, I love Victoria. Memorial Day. Yeah, but we'll have another episode before well, Memorial Day. Yeah. There's a lot of dead people. See, yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Is I'm looking for something between the 14th and the 28th. World Lindy Hop Day. Boy, there's a lot of drinking days because there's National Wine Day. National and Burger Mimosa Day. Day. Brisket and Day. Whiskey Day. How are Brisket Day and Burger Day the same day? I'm going to put brisket on a burger. There you go. National Be a Millionaire Day. I don't know how, how to does celebrate that, work? that, but I'm looking forward. I don't know. <laughs> I'm in. Count me in. I'm done with Victoria Day. I like Canada. Okay. 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 A. A. Have I dealt with Canadian ghosts? I've just dealt with creepy Canadians with lights in their basements. Uh-huh. The house we stayed in. I thought. I know. Okay. I'm like. I have learned how to check if a uh, mirror is two way now. Me so. too. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had known right. that then. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Can we just go to Victoria? I miss Victoria. All right, let's go to Victoria. There's a field full of bunnies. That's true. Bunnies everywhere. Also, you can work on your drink because Whiskey Day, Mimosa Day, and Wine Day are all going to be right on the tail of that. Yeah, but if we're doing stories around B.C. and Victoria, then I want to use Empress 1908 gin. That's not... What's more Canadian than whiskey? Exactly. Gin's not not Canadian as whiskey is. Empress 1908 gin is from Victoria, though. But she drank Canadian whiskey. Canadian whiskey. She drank it like wine. Who's she? Her eyes were the color of Canadian whiskey. 
Canadian whiskey, light brown and fine. Is she making this up, or is this a real thing? She's, she's quoting a song lyric. I just don't know what it is. It's a Canadian whiskey song. Come on. Oh. <laughs> Do they make good Canadian whiskeys, or just like you know oh, the I black know. velvet variety? Pendleton's not. Well, Pendleton, Pendleton's made in Oregon, no, but it's a Canadian style. Is not Crown Royal uh, Canadian? Yeah, you'll notice I said good. Sorry, all you Crown drinkers. I'm not on board. Hey, goddammit, you gotta put your D&D dice somewhere. It's true. We also, a lot of industry people will use Crown Royal bags to carry loose change for when we're making change for guests. So they can feel like they're about to be robbed by Robin Hood? What? Smack someone with it. You can sew a bunch of them into a dress. <laughs> Stripper bags. Stripper bag? They're like the less fancy stripper bags. Okay. Strippers carry big glittery bags, but then you carry a smaller glittery bag to put your money in. That's why my bank bag for work, we call the stripper bag. But you can also use a Crown Royal bag as a stripper bag. Okay. Now I know. The more you know. I've never fit a stripper in a bag that size. You have to chop them up real tiny. <laughs> you saw what I posted on our yeah. Instagram feed this week, right? <laughs> yeah. A septic tank will hold seven mannequins. But if you dismember them, it'll hold 19 and three quarters. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So next episode, are we doing all of Canada or just BC or just I, Victoria? Or? I think we should stick to uh, BC, like Victoria, right. Lower Mainland. I know we don't need to do Lower Mainland, but BC. Let's go. Let's go okay, BC. Go. BC. That sounds like a good spread. I feel like there's plenty going on there. Oh, there's, there is. There's a lot of Wild West stuff happening there, and immigration, Next, yeah. and. Nexium. <laughs> Those aren't really ghost stories. <laughs> but they are frightening. They are terrifying. Those are definitely Yum. the scarier stories, so. <laughs> All right. I guess check out our, this is the point where we say check out our show notes for, I guess we don't really have anything to link to here, do we, in this episode? Other than just our own nonsense. I mean. Check our show notes for our nonsense. I can look and see if we can, like, find some pictures of our old house or something. Maybe. We have the recipe Probably. for spanky Szechuan Sazerac. I, I, haven't, I haven't screwed it up once. Keep saying it. We'll have the... That's also where you can find links for all our socials, where you can find links to ways to support the podcast if you are goodly enough to want to do that via Patreon or T Public or Anchor. Or you can just send us money. No one has gotten for, to the Patreon level of feet pics yet. I don't, I don't know what that's about, but whatever. It's fine. <laughs> Not offended. Also, no one's gotten to the Patreon level where we buy a haunted mansion and you come stay with us. I know, right? <sighs> that being said, please drink responsibly and in accordance with your local laws. Don't end up our next ghost. We didn't turn into a metal band that time, so that was a little disappointing. Yeah. Oh, if you haven't... I was very proud of us for just coming up with that out of nowhere, like... I well, mean, it wasn't done well, but we didn't pre-plan it either, so... We share a brain, so <laughs> makes sense. Um, if you haven't listened, the first episode of Booze and Spirits podcast, Bad Decisions Club, is out now. That's true. And, I don't know, hopefully we'll find reason enough to do some more of those. I mean, most because, of because my life is bad of, decisions. We have lots of bad decision stories that we yeah. can pile on. It'd be fun to get some other people to throw their own bad decision stories in there once in a while. If you have a bad decision story you want us to publish, let us know. We can talk <laughs> about it. We're open. We're just making the uh, shit up as we go. I mean, the shit is real, but the formatting is, is a fly-by-the-seat-of-our-pants kind of maneuver. I get them to tell the stories. I don't, I don't want to read someone else's in my voice. Well, I was thinking we could record it. Or well, if they're scared of, of talking or a mute, then we can figure it out. The that just sounded... Never mind. Yeah, let's not. Let's not go there. I might have made it a full episode without saying anything too offensive, so let's stick with that. <laughs> you just want, you want to have this one victory. <laughs> like, let me have this one small victory. <laughs> I don't want to be a bad person. It just keeps coming out of my mouth that way. <laughs> the little boy in my mouth says these things. <laughs> it's true. It's real true. All right. Until then, that was our mommy. Hopefully this explains some things for you. I apologize. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>